Maybe 40 I'm years. I'm not going to tell him 50. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyways, Brother Scott Hinkle, he's going to come and share the words. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's an honor to be back here at a great church. How many of you love your pastor? Yeah. It's so great. And we were up in the Woodland Park, Colorado. How many of you know the air gets really thin up there? Yeah. I mean, it's 8,500 feet above sea level. And, and uh, man, it's something else. Uh, first time I was up there, I. Man, by the end of the week, I was sucking air. Let me just be flat out honest. <laughs> and they said, you know, Scott, if you take an aspirin a day for a week before you come, it'll help. I said, if I take a whole bottle of bear right now, will I feel better? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm honored to be back with you, grateful for Jesus being in the house today. Amen. Amen. You know, this is a special day for the people of God across America. I'm two camps. Number one, how many of you glad you don't live in California? I live there, my wife is from there. And uh, I mean, it is absolutely insane or more insane than normal. And yet, you know, the churches have been shut down. Uh, the mayor of San Francisco one time would only allow one person in church at a time. Can you imagine that? No. That's crazy. And yet, today they have declared open church day. There's a pastor in Chino Hills, California, Pastor Calvary Chapel, Pastor Jack Dibbs. And he had heard that there were, a church was going to open and they were going to arrest up to a thousand people. So you know what he did? He sent a thousand of his people <laughs> over there so they could be the first arrest. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about. So they declared there by faith, told all the churches, go on ahead and open up. Amen. Secondly, Franklin Graham has asked the people of God across America to pray for the nation today. Amen. So before I can go any further, I believe we ought to honor that request. I don't know if you remember, we are part of the body of Christ at large. Amen. Amen. And what God is doing, God's doing a phenomenal work here in San Saba. Amen. God is doing a great work. I, I called it the nation of Texas and I'm talking to another people, <laughs> another pastor the other day. But God, we are part of what God's doing around the world. So I want to pray right now our country before we go further. Is that okay? Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm originally from New Jersey, so i got to jump out quick, okay? We just do that. You either fast or you die out there. So. <laughs> Father, today we thank you for your goodness and your loving kindness. Lord, we thank you that you have an eye and a heart for this country. And we join our heart, our voices in our faith, along with the people of God crying out to you for your divine intervention mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah. In every state, in every county, in every community, in every wide spot in the road, Holy Spirit, fall. Yes. yes. Do a great miraculous work in this country. We believe you will and you are. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Amen, amen. She can see the sign on there. Absolutely. Amen. He's uh, travels with me on occasion, and as Pastor mentioned, he, he, the first year student at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, just preparing to fulfill the destiny God has ordained for him. Amen. Lord, my goodness gracious, I came back to San Saba and a whole lot has changed. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, what you've done here, y'all ought to just be proud in a holy, righteous mm -hmm. sense. Give God thanks for what he's done here. <laughs> this is absolutely great. I've got a word in my heart 
part today that I want to share with you. And I'm going to confess to you, the message today is not a homiletical masterpiece. Everybody said, you what? Laugh, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, as I said, I just watched it. I'm originally from New Jersey. How many people that's not the Bible Belt? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I'm Jewish by birth. Amen. Uh, thirdly, I was a heroin addict. So that lets you know that I was as unreal as anybody on the furthest part of this planet. But it also gives you a little idea into my strange perspective. So thank you for being filled with grace. <laughs> <laughs> but the message is going to focus on one particular word, and I'm very hesitant. To even mention the word because we have had it thrown at us from what every which way imaginable. And how many of you promise up front that when I mention the word you won't turn me off? I won't. No, we won't. Thank you. We won't. <laughs> how many of you won't turn me off? Let me see you raise your hand. Come on. How many of you will turn me off? <laughs> How many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what question I ask? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? All right, here we go. It's the word, and this message comes from the depths of my spirit, but it's the word that I, I have to talk with you about is the word normal. Mm. Like everybody's had something to say about it. I mean, every newscaster, every politician, every scientist, every sociologist, religious prognosticators, they're all telling us what normal ought to be. Personally, it can be a bit confusing. Uh -huh. Especially if you are trying to have a, establish a stable, solid footing in the chaotic, crazy world and time that we're living in. And so I did something really radical regarding this word. I went to the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Good place to start. And the dictionary states it is the usual, average, or typical state or condition. Let me repeat that. Normal is the usual, average, or typical state or condition. Now, I have chosen to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I trust everybody here has made that choice as well. Living my grace for God. So how does normal play out in my life? That is a huge, huge question. To me, it all begins with something written in the Bible. How many of you believe in the Bible here in San Francisco? Amen. Amen. Come on. Good, Pastor. Amen. You've done well. Thank you. In all these years, people believe in the Bible. That Amen. is a miraculous accomplishment Amen. in America. Amen. You know, if something is written once in the Bible, we ought to pay attention. That's right. Amen. Amen. But think if something is mentioned four times. That's like, hello, McFly, are you in there? Yes. Wake up, smell coffee. Pay attention. Focus. Amen. The phrase that I'm about to quote from Scripture was so radical, and is so radical, that when Martin Luther, how many of you have ever heard of Martin Luther? Not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther. Yeah. Yeah. When he began to preach this phrase, it launched the Great Reformation. And it's this phrase. The just shall live by faith. By faith. Amen. Amen. Now the four verse, the four references, I'm gonna rattle them off. Habakkuk or Habakkuk 2 4, Hebrews 10 38, Romans 1 17, and Galat Galatians. Oh, I'm saying Galatians, that's a combination of Galatians and Galatians. <laughs> Galatians 3 17. I like that. Did you catch that phraseology though? The just shall live by faith. Now let's think about that for a moment. Oftentimes we are 
looking for an increase of faith when we get a big bill in the mail. Mm. <laughs> when the doctor says something. When somebody in our family takes a left turn. Or some other situation. Friends, and God by his grace will often ramp up our faith with a request in a context like that. But the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Yes, amen. When we're confronted with a scenario or a situation and we cry out for more faith, that's more like situational faith. Come on. Huh? The Bible says the just shall live. live. You know, when the doctor gives you a prescription and you were to take the medication over a prescribed extended period of time, one of the things he wants to do is establish a level of that medicine operating in your system to combat an infirmity. Okay. I'm trying, but thanks for helping me out. <laughs> if you preach on the streets for as long as I'm at, you got to pay attention to everybody. you got to listen. You might have to duck. <laughs> But when the just shall live by faith, God intends for us to live our life with a level of faith that can combat what comes against it normally. Yes, God will give an increase or situational faith when necessary. And it's just making sense to anybody. Yes. Come on. The just shall live by faith. The writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 10.35, and I'm going to reference to New Living, he says this. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings. We start out trusting Jesus. I like the word trust sometimes in place of faith. Amen. Yes, amen. Now sometimes we use the word faith so loosely, it kind of loses its impact. That's right. But when you use the word trust, anyone here ever have trust issues? Yeah. Uh -huh. It kind of digs a little deeper. Uh -huh. yeah. So do not throw away. I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and goes, I'm throwing away my faith. Out it goes with the garbage to the curb. No. But life happens, doesn't it? Situations occur. They, we do things. Things are done to us without our asking. We become distracted. And distraction will lead to diversion of path. And the next thing you know, our faith and our trust in God and his word and his ability has diminished. I mean, the times we are living in, with or without a pandemic or a whacked out election, are best lived by faith, are they not? Amen. Amen. Let me get down to it here. All of that was the preface. Normal, any normal, new, old, whatever, normal is dictated by what you choose to believe in your heart or your mind or your spirit. Let me repeat that. Normal is dictated by what we choose to believe in our heart and our mind and our spirit. Track with me, please. Listen to the word of God. In Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks within himself, so is he. Jack, can I have a bottle of water, please, bro? I, I, I forgot to take one up with me. Thank you, sir. I'll finish what I started before church. Hallelujah. Here's another verse in Matthew 8, 13. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done for you as you have believed. Amen. And the servant was healed that very moment. 
many years ago, my normal was lying, scheming, stealing, buying drugs, shooting heroin, and emulating gangsters. That was the standard, usual, normal state of my life. It was my normal. I don't know, what was your old normal? But Jesus Christ set me free. Amen. Amen. He changed my normal. Yes. Amen. He changed your normal. Yes, and amen. Are you were a drug addict, gang member, tattooed on the back of a Harley and stunk like a sewer, or you were sophisticated, squeaky clean, and religious with Chanel No. 5, God and a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Did your normal change? Yes, yes amen. But you chose to follow Christ. Yes. That's right. It has to. Yes. If you are following Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. The new normal for Scott Hanko became freedom from sin. Mm. Freedom from drugs, stealing, street life, and moreover freedom from having no hope or sense of vision for a future besides prison and an early death. That's right. <clears throat> that was mm, years ago. I know you caught that. <laughs> but here's some great news, friends. When you make the right choice. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. Come on. The new normal does include hope. Amen. A future. Yeah. Peace beyond understanding. Yeah. Victory. Freedom. Amen. Amen. No matter what your old normal might have been. So if the sun sets you free, you are truly free, John. Amen. Amen. Paul told us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. That's right. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. I got to confess to you, last March, when this COVID thing started to unravel, I, let me just say this. I am not a very eely, feely, fuzzy, wuzzy person. But I was overtaken by a supernatural peace on a Saturday and Sunday that was biblical because it passed all of my understanding. Mm -hmm. Come on. And as I look back over the crazy, insane, and you ever been on an airplane and they tell you, buckle up, we're going to have a bumpy ride. <laughs> yeah. right. I've had this undergirding peace. That's all going to be all right. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Let me ask you this. Who or what dictates normal to you? Is it the world? Is it CNN or Fox? Is it other people? Is it surroundings? Is it family or heritage? Or is it God in His Word? Word. Thank you, Lord. That's a question you have to process. I'm talking about how we normally live our life. Relate to other people. Conduct our business. Sometimes I'd rather do business with unsaved people than profess Christians. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Ouch. <laughs> how we even do church and Christian life. You see, again, what we choose to believe determined new, old, or just plain, regular, normal. Pure. Hang in here with me. I've got two biblical examples I want to look at here today. Is that okay if I use Amen. the Bible pastor talk? Absolutely. Okay, Please. Okay, I'm just asking for me. <laughs> Please do. I mean, I haven't been here a long time, so I'm going to make up for lost time. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at these two biblical examples. First of all, let's look at the life of Abraham. You're probably familiar with his life story. 
God made a huge, say huge with me. Huge. Huge promise to him when he was a young man. <laughs> he said, you're going to become the father of many nations. Okay? And then he rolls up to his 100th birthday. <laughs> Ain't no chilling. <laughs> and his wife was 90. Interesting. Imagine having a promise like that in the back of your mind, in the heart, for all those years. Decades. We're going to be the father of many nations. Well, then we go to Romans 4, verse 18. It starts out against all hope. The deck was stacked against Abraham having any hope. I mean, it was absolutely 149% hopeless. He was 100. Sarah was 90. I believe he loved his wife. He looked at her and said, Mike, you'll always be a princess to me. That's for sure an old woman, too. <laughs> we read Abraham against all hope. Abraham in hope believed. And so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said, so shall your offspring be. See, we see the, the power of hope and belief combined that led to the fulfillment. Amen. So shall your offspring be. Now, I like this. The NIV brings it out really well. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. He didn't look in the mirror and after dying his hair black, getting his face pulled back, and taking vitamin supplements, and go, 35! <laughs> Right. We got to face the facts. We are in deep doo doo here in America. Yes, we are. Amen. I can't get any stronger than that. <laughs> I was going to say yogurt, and I said forget it. <laughs> in 1986, when my wife was diagnosed with cancer, she laid in the hospital bed. Nurse came in and went to one of the great charismatic churches of the day in the Metroplex, and she looked at her chart. And she said, well, you've got, and the nurse just started dancing around. I looked at her, I said, you mean cancer, carcinoma? Yes. I said, God is not intimidated by that nurse work. As soon as you mentioned it, God didn't reach for value. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And the cancer disappeared between two operations. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's been other battles since then, but that one's gone. Matter of fact, it was kind of crazy. We didn't have health insurance. And I looked at him one day and said, if we beat this cancer, there better be a millennium. We're going to need a thousand years to pay the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> 20 and 45 days, every medical and hospital bill was paid. Amen. 45 days, it's cost, it took them that long to send me the bill. But God met us miraculously. We weren't out begging and doing this and that. God just supernaturally met us. Amen. Amen. Simply, you face the fact. Mm -hmm. His body was as good as dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith, gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Again, the normal for a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman was not having children. That's right. <laughs> but God had given Abraham a sure promise. Abraham believed it. And against all hope, Abraham and hope believed. Abraham made the choice who and what would 
would dictate and determine the normal for this aged couple. Amen. It was God's word and his promise. That's right. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 13 for a moment. This is the story. We have Joshua and Caleb plus ten spots. They were sent to check out Canaan and bring the report back to Moses after their spying mission. And we know first came the majority report. <laughs> the 10. <coughs> we get up at Numbers 13, beginning in verse 27. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Now, I grew up in New Jersey, as I said, and everybody in New Jersey, New York, and that area often goes to Florida during the winter time. And what they do is they come back not only with a tan face, but a bag of fruit, like oranges in an orange dent bag, grapefruit in a yellow dent bag. And they come back and go, we were in Florida, look at the oranges. And I get this picture when I read this passage. This is the fruit, they said, coming back from this. I'm sorry, I just have to say that. Anyway, <laughs> nevertheless, the people who dwell on the land are strong. The cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell on the land of the south. The Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites dwell on the mountains. Canaanites dwell by the sea. And along the banks of the Jordan, and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> But the men who gone up with him and said, in the beginning of verse 31, we're not able to go up against the people that are stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we've gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. What a bummer. <laughs> Next came the Caleb and Joshua report. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. This is what hit me. Caleb and Joshua spent about 40 years in the wilderness with these people. Whining, complaining, and bellying. Now that would be bad enough, but you know what made it worse? Some of them were probably their friends, neighbors, and relatives. That's right. And there's some relatives you don't want to have over on Thanksgiving Day. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> when they come, they come with foul stories, bad attitude, and want to do stuff that you just don't do. Yeah, right. And imagine 40 years. <laughs> That's right. With your weird uncle and strange cousins. Yeah. <laughs> And Caleb has to stand up in the middle of this bunch and go, time out! Yeah. It says in verse 30 of Numbers 13, and Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we're well able to overcome. Now you're probably pretty familiar with these things. Here's an interesting fact. All 12, the 10 plus Caleb and Joshua, saw the exact same thing. That's right. I don't believe Caleb and Joshua had a rose-colored pair of glasses and said, well, we just saw the big fruit and the milk and honey and the nice weather and the beaches and the cruise ships. No. They all saw the same exact thing, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And my friend, every one of us are seeing the same thing every day in our life, every day on the news, aren't we? Yes. Yes, that's right. This is what's clear and obvious, is Joshua and Caleb had a different Filter. Say different filter with different me. Filter. Different, different filter. filter. They had a different filter for processing what they saw 
as opposed to the other ten spies. They chose how they would process what they saw, the facts, in light of God's promises and God's word. That's right. They chose to have the word and the promise of God dictate their response, dictate what normal would be for them. Yes. Again, Abraham didn't deny that both he and Sarah were way beyond usual childbearing years. But they made the choice to have the promise and word of God dictate what normal would be for them in this circumstance. Amen. Here we are today, my friends. We are confronted with situations, circumstances, choices, and decisions of varying degrees of importance. We must process and make the decisions what is normal. Maybe it might be another or new normal. For our lives, our family, and our business. Things run differently today, don't they? Yes. yes. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says this. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart, heart, that is the kicker, yeah. and lean Lame. not on I'm your own understanding. understanding. That's right, amen. That's a tough one. Yes, the scariest phrase I hear being uttered today is this: "I got this." <laughs> Serious. <laughs> I've walked with Jesus and preached the gospel for fifty years. I'll tell you what, I ain't got this. That's right. That's right. You learn to trust in the Lord mm. with all. When the Bible says all, what does it mean? All. 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 With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Yeah. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. You see, God wants to give us, my friend, another normal, regardless of how good or bad the prior one was. It starts with what we choose to believe based upon the word of God and the spirit of the living God. Amen. Period. Amen. You see, I'm a little weird. Thank you for not agreeing with me up front, but you can in your heart. <laughs> Because of my upbringing, uh, I had no idea what a Christian was, although I'm an American. I'm raised in the most highly educated, densely populated, wealthy part of the United States of America, the most economically and politically powerful part of this country, this part of America where Christianity first came to the nation. All this is in the northeastern United States. But I had absolutely zero clue about Christianity. So I always look a little bit from the outside looking in perspective. I'm extremely enculturated in Christendom. Don't misunderstand me. But I always look at it a little bit from the unreached person's perspective. And I, I, I realized, wow. We need to make the choices based upon God's word. Sometimes I hear people say, God told them that, and I'm going, serious? Because <laughs> it doesn't line up with the book. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Friends, when our normal is anchored here, Amen. 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 Come on. You won't be tossed to and fro. That's right. When situations circum and circumstances change, and they have, they will, and they do now, don't they? Yes. <clears throat> What's normal for a child of God? New birth. Amen. New life. <coughs> new days. New beginnings. His mercies are new each morning, we're told. Hallelujah! Thank amen. you for amen. a new dose of mercy today. Amen. 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 Advancing forward in God's purposes. 
is the norm. The kingdom of heaven only moves in one direction, forward. Amen. Amen. I press on towards the mark. I don't lay back and cruise. I press on towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of heaven doesn't go backward. It doesn't mark time. It's always forward. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That is normal. Forward motion is normal for the child of God. That's right. A revived relationship with Jesus Christ. The best way I can illustrate it is with water. Water has great use in every temperature. Yes. I'm going to prove it. <laughs> <laughs>
conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. Devin, Evan, I mean, all these things, yes, they do call for our importance, but we are obsessing over them. Yes, we are. And here is what's at the expense of As I was at my friend's home and ranch in Vernon, we've left the back gate open. The coyotes have come in and killed the chickens. Mm -hmm. I've spent 50 years telling people about Jesus and helping others do the same thing, creating evangelism and programs at Bible colleges, conducting church seminars, all of this stuff. Not once have I been approached in such a non-intimidating, welcoming manner. Mm. And where are the believers? Mm. With the redeemed of the Lord Say so. Say so. We lift the back gate open. All. And our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. <laughs> and look, the devil is crazy, but he's not stupid. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we've remained silent. If we talk more about politics than we do Jesus, we need to rethink who we are and what we're all about. Politics are important. Let me just go on ahead and say this. You want to know a great voter's guide? This is the very best voter's guide. Yeah. That's right. I'm not pinning my hopes on an elephant or a donkey. That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> I've made up my mind. Who else? Well, I've already voted, so yeah, I made up my mind. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to do the same thing the day after the election, no matter who moves into 1600 Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Amen, That's amen. right. Come on. I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to pray, I'm going to read my Bible, I'm going to have a cup of tea, I'm going to pay my tithes, I'm going to tell people about Jesus Christ, I'm going to preach the gospel the same way I did the day before. Yeah. Amen. None of that's going to change. Because I am ultimately a citizen of the kingdom of God. Yes, I'm an earthly citizen of this country. Hallelujah. I am grateful for that. Yes, But this is my voter in my life, God. Amen. That's not in my sermon notes, but I just had to say it. Okay? Thank you Amen. Very much. Yes, you can. Thank you, Jesus. You see, if we gather together, sing songs, pray prayers, listen to sermons, God normal Christians look for ways that we can take the message we've heard. And implement it and apply it through our life. Not just go home and go great time at church today. And that's the end of it. As a traveling minister and a traveling evangelist, we do outreaches in different parts of the country. For 39 years, we've led an army to the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. We've been going to Cuba. But everything's been shut down in a lot of ways. And in Dallas, uh, when the restaurants just reopened for drive through and pickup and takeout, my wife said, well, honey, I'd like some barbecue tonight. And there's a brand new barbecue restaurant that opened up not too far, and I figured I'd go down there and get some takeout barbecue. Drove down there, the line was long. <laughs> and I wasn't happy. <laughs> and I got in line anyway. I just started to pray after I got over myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Lord, what are we going to do when all this thing is over? And this is what hit me. More gospel and more people in more places. And what we've determined, and we've seen God unpack it, is if I can't do this, then I'm going to do that. Yeah. Man. If I can't go here, I'm going to go there. That's right. I am not going to allow the circumstances around me to paralyze me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In my life, mm -hmm. in my family, on what God's entrusted us with. I think that's a rule of thumb. Amen. That's right. You see, living by faith is living and acting like what you believe is true. I need to wind this down. But again, Abraham, Joshua, and Caleb refused to accept 
whatever abnormal normal was being presented to them. They chose to believe what their, Jeremiah declared. O oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong and hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. That's right. Amen, amen. Folks, right now, let's begin to start another, maybe it's even a new normal. Mm -hmm. Let's choose God and his word to dictate what normal is in our life. Amen, 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 amen. yes. Here's a few verses to go along the way. Mm -hmm. I love Psalm 112, verse 4, a great promise. Even in darkness, light rises for the upright. Yeah. Chew on that. The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter, Proverbs 4, 18 tells us. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that's overcome the world. Our faith. Amen. Amen. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. Yes. One more great promise. I'm going to continue to use another promise. Amen. 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 Psalm chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1. I believe <clears throat> creates for us a picture of of a normal Christian life. That's right. It starts out, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Nor stands in the path of sinners. In other words, that you're rolling with the sinners. Here's the kicker. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. <laughs> well, uh oh. Uh oh. Can you find yourself in that seat? Can you get a chair over? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. amen. In addition to that, <laughs> maybe you're hearing people like that. Sometimes I, I, when I get around people like that, and it might sound all right, it reminds me of a sparkling jacuzzi. <laughs> and it looks so inviting. Yeah. And you go and you step in and you immerse yourself and you find out that wasn't sparkling water, that was clear, bubbly, toxic waste. Uh -oh. <laughs> and uh -oh. you immerse yourself in it. Yeah. <laughs> get up and get out of it. Refuse to have hardening of the attitudes. Yeah. Amen. 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 And move ahead. Okay. Listen is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, say delight with me, his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law he meditates day and night. Don't you like how the word will work in your life in the middle of the night? Yes. Have you ever been wrestling with the beast of Ephesus in your sleep? They're barking at you, yelling at you, spewing different thoughts and scenarios. But then all of a sudden, a Bible verse crops up in your mind. And it addresses the bark of the beasts of Ephesus. And you're like, wow. And you begin to combat that in your sleep with that word that rose up. Because you, you have a delight in the law of the Lord. You think about it day and night. You put into you put it into your life so you can draw it out of your life. Yeah. If you're not putting the word of God in, you have nothing to draw out. That's right. Go into the bank. I want to write a check for fifty thousand dollars, but you don't have anything in the bank. Still so give me the money. No. <laughs> Incidentally, I feel funny today. I go to the bank and I wear a mask and I look at the guy. I feel really funny being here with a mask. <laughs> and I'm giving you money and not taking money. <laughs> Shoot me away. Anyway, <laughs> in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water yeah, yeah, yeah. that brings forth fruit. fruit. Yes. In its season, whose yes. yes. leaf also shall not, not wither. wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Right. Amen. 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 That's Amen. Right. Amen. Of a normal believer's life. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Friends, the world needs God normal people in these important times. You know the massive prayer movement that took place a few weeks ago in Washington. Can we allow that to empower us to move forward? Would you begin another normal for your life today? Amen. Mm, amen. You know, it, it, it might just simply be in your mind, your thinking, your perspective that you really pursue having the mind of Christ. It might be physically. You need God to touch you physically or to me. It may be relationally. You need to conduct your life, your marriage, your interaction with friends or family or relatives in a normal Bible way. Yes. Maybe financially. Maybe today normal would begin if you made your heart or life right with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I told my story a little bit earlier on. That he changed my normal. Yes. Yes. Radically so. Yes. When I asked Jesus to forgive me as I uh, and to come in my life. I, look, I was, man, I was messed up. Like I was going down to the state of New Jersey on drug charges when I was 18 years old. I ended up in a little town in central Kansas. I'm in, I'm in a high school assembly one day. Man, I'm using drugs. I'm all messed up. And, uh, I'm sitting with a drug using cousin and we're having an anti drug assembly. And I thought that was boring because I knew more than the speaker, so I thought. I had just turned 19 one week earlier. And I'm sitting in the balcony, making up excuses why, you know, they want to listen to this guy. And all of a sudden, I feel a brush across my face and I hear a voice. It wasn't a loud, booming, audible voice. But it was what I call the whisper. You know what I'm talking about? And the voice said, hey, go listen to this guy's got something to say because you don't know everything. <laughs> that was a word. And I felt compelled to talk to him. I won't bore you with the length of the story, but I borrowed a car, found out what his schedule was, caught up with him two schools later. I had a friend, and his wife talked to my friend, and he took me out to his car, a 1969 red, white, Malibu, super sports Chevy, really nice car. And I sat there. You see, those are days when they would greet most weird looking people in the back of most churches with a pair of scissors in a kennel I saw. <laughs> Boy, you need to get shaved before you can get saved. Yeah. <laughs> if they'd let you in at all. Wow. And he didn't tell me I was a dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking drug addict, although I was that a whole lot more. But I saw something in his life that day. I had no idea what it was, but I wanted and made up my mind I was going to get whatever Jim had. He had an intangible something about him. You know what I'm talking about? He, I, I'm looking at him saying, you just got something about you. And that something about him was the fact that he played music in Hollywood. I played a little music. And, and his prior lifestyle looked like a dream to me. Because when he spoke, he didn't preach. Matter of fact, he just told his story, and at the end he said, look, if it was a book, a hospital, a doctor, I'd tell you it was Jesus. That went right over my head. But I wanted what he had, and I bowed my head in the front seat of his car. I didn't even verbalize words. Didn't know I had to. But I cried out of my heart, God, if you can do everything this man is talking about, go on ahead and do it. Jesus, it's you in the gutter. I've been in the gutter. I had no more options. And immediately I felt like somebody came in on the inside of me with a scrub brush and a hose. I pictured a man in painter's coveralls and just cleaning me out and all the garbage crud literally I felt like drained out of my foot. Mm. I felt brand new. Amen. Then within 90 minutes I started to tell people what had happened in my life. I hadn't even been to church yet. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know any better. I just said, look, man, I just asked Jesus in my life. I don't have to do drugs anymore. Don't lock him to you and try him. And that was it. I mean, when you say for only 90 minutes, how much theology do you have? <laughs> <laughs> but I told everything that I knew.
funny, the first guy I talked to, 40 years later, I get hit up on social media. Scott, do you remember that day? Yes! Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did too. Maybe today you need to begin a new normal by beginning Amen. your heart, by Amen. making your heart and your life right with God. Amen. It's not that hard. Yeah. I spoke at a church the other day, and the assistant pastor was introducing me, and he said, Scott, when Scott preached here in 1996, I've been coming to this church for a while, but I've never given my life to the Lord. He said, and I came down and answered the altar call and gave my life to Jesus. Today he's an associate pastor of this great church. Amen. He was hanging around for a while. But he had never made the choice. Wow. Try. And crossed the line. Sometimes you belong before you believe. It's time to believe. Amen, it's amen. Time. It's time to trust. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's time to start that other normal that God designed for your life in an eternity past. Right. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes with me for just a moment as I ask you just a few questions before we pray. And in a moment I'm going to ask to those of you believers, you say, Scott, today I declare I am going to begin Another normal, allowing God and His Word to dictate what I believe in my heart, my mind, and my spirit. And you may say, broadly, I do this, but then the Holy Spirit begins to work in the small areas of your life. When someone says they're going to give you a new anointing, I sometimes go, oh my goodness, because I know what that means. It's not just blessing and power. It means God's presence is going to increase, and that means He's going to dig around a little bit. People don't preach that very often. Right. Mm -hmm. In a moment, I'm going to ask for those of you who say, I choose to allow God and His Word to dictate what normal is in every area of my life. We're going to make that commitment. But before I do that, I must ask this. Are you here today and you say, Scott, I choose to make my heart of my life right with God. It may be for the very first time. Or maybe I need to renew my commitment. I've drifted from God. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Amen. This beats going to other places. Yes. Amen. But the reason you're here is not to just scratch a little itch and stroke your conscience. Come on. Or satisfy mama. That's right, preach it. But it's to make your heart and life right with God that you can enter in a new dimension for an amazingly normal life with God in your life. Hallelujah. So with every eye closed right now, I'm going to ask this question. You say, Scott, I choose. I want to make my heart and my life right with God today, either for the very first time or a renewed time. Let me just see your hand right now. Thank you. Thank you. You can put those down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Several hands have gone up. We'll pray together with you and God is listening. He's been waiting for you. Today you say, Scott, I choose. I choose to declare that this day I will enter into another normal in my life. Allowing God and His Word to dictate to me what I believe in my heart and my mind and my spirit. Today is the day I choose another normal in my life with God. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet right now. And if you raised your hand a few moments ago, I'm going to ask you to join me as well. But today you say, I choose. A God normal for my life. I choose the word of God to dictate what I believe in my heart and my mind and my spirit. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet right now. You make this choice today. You may have served God for 100 years, 100 minutes. I'm on my feet declaring a new normal for my life. It is my pursuit. 
You choose today to live a new normal with God. No matter how good the other one was. Process that. I choose to begin another normal in my life. I choose to allow God's word to dictate to me the normal for my life. Amen. <coughs> I'm standing in myself to make that declaration and I'm to make that declaration is not saying the other one's bad, it's saying I'm going to grow, I'm going to go forward here. I'm not willing to stand for what was good before. I'm willing to stand for what God has and see for better. Amen. <coughs> Amen. I'll wait because some of us are processing that. We may need a different filter for our life. <coughs> you know, every month or so, I change the filter in my heating and air conditioning unit. Sometimes it doesn't look all that dirty. I just change it anyway. I want a fresh, new amen, amen. filter amen, amen. in my life. Come yes. On. Maybe that is what you need to commit to today. The filter in our life. I'm going to ask you to raise your hands to the Lord as if you're lifting up the entirety of your life. I hope I am clearly communicating what I am asking of you today. It's that we choose not to live cold or even 98.6 room temperature. But by the grace of God, our walk with Jesus moves to the boiling point, 212 degrees. As you raise your hands to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to lift up both of your hands as if you're lifting up the entirety of your life to Jesus. Not that you are praising God, but that you're lifting up the entirety of your life to the Lord. And let's pray this prayer right now. It will be twofold. There are those that are making the heart of my prayer with God. And if you would desire to come forward, that would be purposely in line. But let's pray out loud right now. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for your goodness and loving kindness. Thank you for your goodness. And You've done more for me than I could ever deserve. I ask you to forgive me, Lord Jesus, for living my life in ways that don't honor and please you. Cleanse me of my sin. I exchange the life that I've been living for the life you died to give me. Live inside me, Lord. This day, I choose that you and your word will dictate normal to me. I choose to allow what you dictate to me to take root in my heart and my mind and my spirit. I choose your word to be the filter for my life and my perspective. In Jesus' name. Now let's give God thanks. Can we do this?